you took apart every single one of your toys, found out how it worked, put it back together, it never worked the same, but who cared? You learned a lot. There's no kids that gonna, that's gonna do that now. Right. Because if it's broken, you just buy a new one. Stretch Armstrong, by the way, is full of disappointing <laughs> full fluids. Of disappointing fluids. <laughs>On this episode, we meet the ambitious geeks who are becoming like little children. There's all this great new tech, mini golf, bowling, movies, that stuff hasn't changed in what, 30 years? In order to reimagine both entertainment and education. We're having an absolute blast here. And possibly men's fashion. Just put a GoPro up my dress. <laughs> Honestly. There are lots of ways to achieve the American dream. The essential ingredients have always included a mix of hard work, risk, imagination, and delayed gratification. In the last few decades, though, a new component has been introduced, something called disruptive innovation. Fancy talk for a new invention that creates a new market while destroying an old one. But can it happen on a carnival midway? The answer is yes. Behold, America's first ever steam carnival. The innovators behind this modern midway believe a high-tech twist on the rides, games, and entertainment of yore could be the classroom of the future. There's a man on a unicycle. There's a man with a mohawk. He's on a ball. That could only mean one thing. Well, it could mean any number of things, I suppose. Before you go to the carnival, you've got to visit the circus, specifically the two-bit circus a collective of doers and thinkers housed inside an old brewery at the intersection of engineering and art. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you. Good. Good. Welcome to the circus. So th this is HQ? Yep, uh, this is our old power plant, one of the oldest buildings in downtown, and uh, well, let's take you inside. Are you sort of in charge? Uh, sort of. The two founders, Brent Bushnell, CEO and Chief Schmoozer, and Eric Gradman, CTO and Mad Inventor, are responsible for running this two-bit circus. This is our garden gnome, Mr. Teeth. This is beautiful. He's, uh, he's fantastic, made out of a whole bunch of old car parts. Uh -huh. uh, our lead engineer, Dan Busby, is a master welder. You seriously have, a, have an engineer called Dan Busby? Dan Busby, That's yeah. a fantastic yeah. engineer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let him right. Let's get Busby on this. It'll yeah. be great. And in fact, right behind you, the Spitfire right here, uh -huh. literally is an electric car that he converted. Dan Busby converted yeah. an old Triumph Spitfire? Yeah, see that power cord? That I is do. plugged into the gas can. He gets, I think, 60 miles to the charge? Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> is, there, is there any chance that later in the day, if we're all on our best behavior, that Dan Busby and I could take a cruise in the Triumph? I think that's a great idea. All right, take Let's go. In. Let's go. <laughs> Their big top is a workshop filled with a mix of artists, engineers, and entrepreneurs who are working hard at playing different. So where am I then? I'm at your office. This is our office. So this is a really cool building. It was built just after the turn of the century. Yeah. Right. This whole complex was a giant power plant. It was a steam power plant. So is this why it's called the Steam? Steam Carnival. See, I thought it was probably a take on STEM. You're, you're right. You nailed it. The folks at the Two Bit Circus are obsessed with an acronym that's gained a lot of traction over the last few years. You may have heard of it. It's called STEM, and it stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. Engineering is a fundamentally creative discipline, and so we really want to convert kids into STEM kids. Art sort of helps hook them into it, get them excited. By adding art, they've not only changed the acronym from STEM to STEAM, they've reminded people of just how important creativity is to the business of learning. Would you say you're on a mission? Totally. Lead on. Yeah, yeah. Their mission is to inspire young minds by having them tinker in the art of entertainment. Right now, we're, we're preparing for our Steam Carnival. Right. It's happening in October, and we're bringing a ton of custom carnival games, games that no one's seen before. So today, we want to bring you through all these carnival games. We want to show them to you. We want you to play them. We want you to tell us if you're having fun. I'll be amazingly transparent with you. But when you say <laughs> carnival, I mean, are we talking like darts and blow up the thing? Yeah. Mini golf, bowling, movies, that stuff hasn't changed in, what, 30 years? Yeah. And yet, there's all this great new tech, laser range finders, cheap sensors, microcontrollers. You know that game where you, you, you take the hammer and you hit the target? See how high it's the called the high strike. Yes. So we threw away most of that game, right. and we replaced the part that goes up with 20,000 volts of electricity. So now you hit the target, and a Jacob's Ladder goes up. This is the kind of thing that we hope to share with a bunch of other kids and say, hey, it's amazing to be an engineer, right? Engineering is a new rock and roll. 
I have like a gajillion questions. Would you prefer I ask them here or perhaps in the course of the day? Full disclosure, I gotta take a call. You got a lot going on. I mean, don't mind us. We're yeah, just an sorry. international TV crew yeah, yeah. that can completely change the face of your business. But no, no, I'm curious. Like, is it a, is it a business call? Is yeah, it, it, is a, a, it is a. Ask for the sale. I'm going for it. ABC. Always be. Wow, close. we didn't even plan that. Hey, a schmoozer has got a schmooze. It's showbiz, right? <laughs> This right here is our Carney College. Mm -hmm. These are Carnies. Well, Carnies <laughs> in training. So everybody here is building carnival games. Sometimes that means they're writing software. Sometimes it means they're making circuits. Sometimes it means they're welding up rocking horses. You're welding up rocking horses. Oh, that yes, sounds... sir. You're going to love the rocking horses. But here you get to see some of the stuff in progress. So here, let me take you around here. I want to show you this. This is Rena. Rena has been working on something very, very cool. Hello, Rena. Hello. Um... These are prototypes for a game we're calling Human Pinball. <laughs> um, so we'll start out with a mini one. It's one of our prototypes. We've had like three or four by now. Before you can get to the big thing and have 50 of them, you want to make sure everything's working. And so you make small ones and like fewer of them. Sure. These will light up in random colors, and your contestants are going to run around and try and hit the ones in their color as fast as possible. I got it. But here's the thing. We're going to make a dozen different games. We're going to test them out on corporate clients. And we're going to see what sticks. We're going to see what people find fun. And that's our product. Come on down here. Let me, let me right, bring you nice into our... Nice to meet you all. We've got our little laser cutter room. We do a little bit of light 3D printing. We do a little bit of light casting, a little bit of light laser cutting on our itty bitty tiny little laser cutter. Which I love this tool more than anything. Um, and you love a laser cutter yes. more than anything. Well, maybe more than any other tool. How about that? Okay. Yeah. So we wanted to make a little hood ornament for the next project that okay. we're going to show you. So Peter has put together this, and he's about to tell us how he did this, and then he's going to turn it into a what? Like a hood ornament? A much larger version. All right, and that's going to be accomplished with the uh, laser cutter. Exactly. So I started with this lovely image, converted it to black and white. And then I decided which elements of the picture I would like to fully cut out, yep. and which elements I would simply like to burn a small layer through the wood. And so now the beautiful thing about this is this thing is essentially an inkjet printer, but instead of ink, it shoots out a highly precise and focused laser beam. Do you have safety guns? You don't need them for this. No. So now, if you want to go ahead and hit start. I will hit start, but I have a few questions first. Where'd you go to school? I currently go to MIT. MIT? Yeah. A lot of big brains. It's the best place to be. What's your major? Basically robotics. Basically? So I'm a double major in mechanical and electrical engineering. <laughs> and so where they intersect for me is robotics. All right, here we go. How did you first react when you were told that you'd have to get an identical haircut as Eric's? I was shocked. <laughs> <laughs> what inspired that, that look? I used to be a professional fire dancer. And... Uh, <laughs> Come on, get it over with. Go ahead, get it all out. And then, I lit half my head on fire. <laughs> I used to be a professional fire dancer, <laughs> but there was an incident. <laughs> After you, sir. Really? Yeah. I very rarely walk out of the shot first. It's weird, I'll yeah. try it. Well, partly because I never know where I'm going. It's TV magic. There's something cool in every direction. All right, follow me. Maybe we'll see the finished product later. Peter, follow me. I'm in downtown Los Angeles in the headquarters of the Two-Bit Circus, where some very passionate inventors are making a very persuasive case to change STEM to STEAM. In other words, it's a place where everything old is new again. Wow. Perfect. Very cool. Including our logo. Hello. Hello. Hi, I'm Elise. Mike. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I do some of our wearable electronics development uh -huh. and our work on our education side of Two-Bit yep. Circus and Steam Carnival, so. I have something that I'm prototyping for our carnival, and I do need a model. I'm it. Okay. I'll do it. Go for it. Step right in there. So, wearable electronics. Yes. When did those two words start becoming grouped up together? And As these uh, components, the, the pieces became smaller and cheaper, mm -hmm. um, more and more people started to uh, create products that were designed especially for sewing and incorporated into clothes. It's really taken off in the past six months. Okay, I gotta plug you in. But you look so good this way. So. Thanks. <laughs> okay, I think it works. 
part of what our mission is, is to inspire kids to become inventors and to ultimately build systems like this and creations like what you're wearing. So what would the whole outfit really so be? So that's actually part of why I wanted to see it on a live model. Maybe it will be motion. motion Activated. Motion. Exactly, exactly. So as you spin, maybe the lights will follow you. Right. Or um, maybe give you GPS location. There are all sorts of awesome. I know, right? No. <laughs> No. So you can actually take a small GPS module and embed it into your clothing. Your skirt could tell you mm -hmm. where home is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh. Just put a GoPro up my dress. You did, didn't you? <laughs> Honestly. Where'd you go to school? I went to my undergrad at Georgetown and my graduate degree is from Harvard. And what'd you major in Harvard? Arts and education. So I, I'm a former teacher. This place was literally made for you. I love it here. What is this? It is a parallel circuit that actually functions as a wearable electronics. Do you want to help me make one? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Can you light it? I mean, will this? Oh, yeah, 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 sure, absolutely. What we have are these kind of basic electronic components. This is an LED mm -hmm. that has been shrink wrapped with some fiber optic uh, strands on the top. Right. And here is some copper tape. Yep. And your charge is to match up the black dot on the LED to the black side, the, the negative trace. Yep. So explain to me from a, uh, from a physics standpoint why it is this is working. Right now, when we plug in the battery, um, circuit just means circle. So what's gonna happen is the electric current is going to flow from the battery mm -hmm. out through the wires into the first LED, actually the first and second LEDs simultaneously. And as it passes through, it will cause the LED to illuminate which will send through the fiber optics, which is just plastic, mm -hmm. through the ends and out the top, and then back to the battery. Got so it. So making that full circle. I was just testing you. I believe your answer is correct. <laughs> Wearable technology has actually been around for decades. You might be more familiar with hearing aids and pacemakers, but here, the two-bit innovators are looking for the next applications of this technology and trying to inspire the next generation with these more basic applications along the way. We look at this project as something that is kind of a basic introduction yeah. to a parallel circuit. And once you're able to do this and have a basic understanding of how a circuit functions, then you can kind of go on and do something a little more complicated. And that's where we move from a project like this to a project like the skirt. Really? Yeah, sure. Looking good. Yeah. I like it. Mm -hmm. It works. Princess for a day. It's a good look on you. You leave me alone for 10 minutes? Wow. <laughs> Looks good. I like it. I think I've lost a, a really serious bet. <laughs> so we've got some really testosterone-filled manly things to show you in the back of the shop. Hard to imagine you could top this. So I'm going to have to ask you to take your dress off. <laughs> You're not the first little fella. I can untie it for you. So hey, we got some stuff out back that was uh, welded, not sewn. Yeah. And it's awesome. Come on. Great to meet you. Charmed. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks so much. Mike. How you doing? Dan. Dan, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What's your last name? Busby. You're the guy with the Triumph. Yes, I'm the guy with the Triumph. I was told that if I was on my best behavior, we could possibly take a ride. Oh, uh, well, maybe. You gotta be pretty well behaved. <laughs> I will blow you away with my <laughs> rectitude. <laughs> All right, Problem. this is the labyrinth. The what? The labyrinth. This is modeled after like the labyrinth game. The little marble yeah, right? thing. Right, the little marble steering yeah. around game. <laughs> okay, so let's play this thing. All right, you guys. Mike. Mike. Right. There you yeah. go. There, there we go. go. You do leverage. There we you go. Leverage. Yeah, yeah. Mike, Mike, no, bring no, it down. No, bring no, it down. No. Now you guys down. No, oh, yeah, not yet. It's all Mike. No, no, it's me. Oh, no, 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 no. We're going the wrong way. Go back. If this game came with instructions, I suppose they'd read, get the ball through the maze without suffering a serious groin injury. But as you're playing, it's impossible not to ask yourself how it was built. And that's the point. Patience, patience wins this race. Yeah! Do not jump off the teeter-totter in celebration. <laughs> no, no, no sudden moves. Should we get on the feast? See the annex? The yeah. feast? Yeah. yeah. This is the movable feast. All right. Let's oh, you're going to love this thing. So this is the movable feast. This is an eight-person pedal-powered dining table. It's got uh, full suspension steering. It is uh, road legal. You can take it anywhere. And on the streets of Los Angeles. Is that true? Is, yeah. that, is any of that true? Absolutely. Have you taken this out on the road before? Absolutely. And have you attracted the attention of law enforcement? Only for photos. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I'm here in downtown Los Angeles at the Two Bit Circus, checking out a movable feast, their eight person mobile dining car. We decorate this as fine as can be and have, and we dress up in tuxedos and ball gowns and gotta be go around me. on the town. How, do, how can you do it? It is some considered sort of a bicycle. Everybody's pedaling underneath and it's all feeding into one drive shaft. So, how many episodes of MacGyver have you memorized? <laughs> <laughs> Plenty, actually. <yeah. laughs> The movable feast epitomizes our appetite for curiosity. All right, guys, you guys ready to pedal? So that's the steering wheel. This is the steering wheel. <laughs> An appetite these guys are determined to feed. Oh, it's great, man. You can actually burn off your calories yeah, yeah, yeah. as you're going. I love the sound of this. Yeah, the grinding and the... It's, it's moving, you know? Yeah. <laughs> when I first got on this, I expected it to be impossible to pedal. And it's like butter, man. You just One person can pedal yeah. this. Because the whole thing weighs 500 pounds. Yeah. So. We weigh like twice as much as the table. Brakes! Yeah, friction's a pretty decent brake. <laughs> Just stop pedaling and hope for the best. <laughs> so there we are. That was my, my first ride on the, uh, it's the movable feast. A movable feast. It's kind of a Hemingway reference. It's a total Hemingway reference. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Entirely I'm fact, Hemingway. I'm surprised you haven't heard from his estate. <laughs> so, Dan, sorry. Yeah. Be before we go, I just, I. This is like off what? Like a Model T? This is off of a Model T. The the tail lights and the headlights. The chandelier I got off of Craigslist, but everything else is basically handmade. All the suspension and all the gearing and all the stuff had to be figured out. And the tires, these are sewer culverts. Okay, yeah, so these here. are buried under roads. And it's corrugated, right? So this used to be 20 feet long. Right. You chop off a foot of it, and that way you have a ridge in the middle to put your spokes. I mean, so how and does And these are Prius wheels. Prius wheels? <laughs> <laughs> and tell me again how it's street legal. Well, the laws that define a bicycle are pretty vague. <laughs> 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 That's why it's street legal. Got it. And All so right, well, show me what you got in there. <laughs> awesome. We're just leaving double parks for now. I think that'll be fine. Who's going to tell? <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's the showroom. <laughs> okay. Should we jump right in and have a horse race? Yeah. I think we need to. Well, you should maybe explain a thing or two. No, no, no. You know, sit down. No, 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 no. We're not explaining anything. Go! What the? <laughs> Oh, I think my yeah. Is there no yeah. game that you don't beat me at? <laughs> All right, so what was your inspiration for this? Did you grow up uh, in an equine environment? No, we just knew the squirt gun horse racing games from a carnival yes. that are kind of dull. They look good, but you're just You're just holding aiming. right there, squirting So water. we thought we'd kind of take it up a notch. How long have you been here? Two months. Or Two months. One, one month. One month. So is it fun? It is. It's a lot of fun. And yeah. this was something you that you you've only been here a month, so you must have come right in with the idea and gone. We've already brought this to an event and demoed it. You could go even further and incorporate the traditional horse racing game while you're on this and moving. <laughs> you can squirt at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually really good. That's the idea in a nutshell. Amuse yourself by building amusements and stimulate curiosity through interactive games and competition. The interactivity even makes lunchtime an adventure. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh here we go. All right, I'm taking the, the seat up here now. <laughs> right? Wow. Yes, I was hungry. Ah, that's amazing. Hungry? Oh, yeah. I love this. Well, look, it's not the. Uh, Tuxedos and tails are fine china, but <laughs> It'll whatever. Do. So the plan is to go uh, go back toward Dan's car. You're right, straight. You're good. I don't know about the back tires. Uh, <laughs> dig in, me. guys. Wow. <laughs> oh man. You can really feel the I calories yeah. burn right off. Mm -hmm. I tried to go through drive-throughs on unicycles. They don't appreciate it. Oh well, really? Yeah. We had four what? unicyclists riding in formations. Oh, should we park it right here? Well, we'll just pull it in right here, and uh -huh. that way I can have room to get out. And then, of course, there's the issue of Dan's converted electric Spitfire. Uh, so uh, we're, we're going to transition from the bicycle section to the automotive section. Let's go for a spin. That's the plan. 1964? 1964 Triumph Spitfire. <laughs> that is not stock. <laughs> Removed all the engine and all the parts that smell and leak fluids and all that sort of fun stuff and replaced it with an 18 kilowatt hour lithium battery pack and a 
basically a 40 horsepower motor, and away we go. How fast can you go? Uh, it, it drives so fast that I feel like the car is going to fall apart. <laughs> so like the limiting factor is not the drivetrain. It really is the fact that this is a 50-year-old car. Yeah. All right, so let me show you in the trunk here. That's where I got my... Uh, I have more cells here, and I have a charger right here. So this is what tops it off every day. So this is your everyday car? This is my everyday car. Not this, a gimmick? This not is a you. gimmick. This is a real, the real deal. Great. Let's take a ride. Let's do it. Here, pull that little knee up there. All right. I'll, I'll drive, drive this time. <laughs> So despite it being a tiny old car, it actually has, you know, enough leg room. Yeah. It's so stealthy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's actually so stealthy. The only sound is the car rattling. How you doing, Dan? Dan, how are you? When Eric and Brent started the company, the first person they hired was a physicist and artist named Dan Busby. Dan shares the missionary zeal of the founders and told me all about it as we took a spin in the 100% electric 64 Triumph Spitfire personally converted by Dan. This was uh, definitely a labor of love, converting this car. You just dive into something, you end up becoming an expert in it. What's your take on what's going on in the country as far as entrepreneurship and education? What are we doing wrong? Well, that's yeah, a really tough question because the, the, the commodification of everything we own makes it so that nobody learns to work with their hands anymore. I bet you did the same thing that I did when I was a kid. You took apart every single one of your toys, found out how it worked, put it back together, it never worked the same, but who cared? You learned a lot. There's no kids that gonna, that's gonna do that now. Right. Because if it's broken, you just buy a new one. Stretch Armstrong, by the way, is full of disappointing <laughs> full fluids. Of disappointing fluids. <laughs> Busby's enthusiasm for reinvigorating the industrial arts is infectious. And not long after we filmed this segment, the 2-Bit Circus got a little closer to becoming the disruptive innovation we talked about earlier. <laughs> we have achieved our goal of creating a completely new form of out-of-home entertainment. The kids are having a ball. And to see that light bulb moment where the kids open their eyes and they're like, science is awesome, right? Engineering is amazing. Is mission accomplished for us. This is a lot of positive feedback here, so we're hoping that this grows and excels and, and we want to take it around the country. It's an ambitious goal, but there's reason for hope. In January of 2017, the Two-Bit Circus secured $15 million in funding, which means this movable feast just might be coming to your town. You've got big brains and you've got a big idea. And so I thought before we say goodbye, we could just solve the problems of the world vis-a-vis -vis what's going on right now in this country regarding manufacturing, education, entrepreneurship, the inability to make stuff with our hands, yeah. and our propensity and proclivity to outsource. Technology surrounds us. We need to make sure everyone understands the basics of science, technology, engineering, art, and math. We're having an absolute blast here, right? If we can inspire an army of inventors, then maybe they can go out and actually fix all that stuff. Not bad. Do me a favor, <laughs> strike a pose, look meaningfully off in the distance as I walk carefully over to Troy and wrap up the program. Sounds Will you good. do that for me? Which, Love which it. Distance? Distance? Uh, whatever distance you want. You're the scientist. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> strike your pose, do it however you want. The bottom line is really pretty simple. If there's a future for the country worth bragging about, it resides right now somewhere in the medulla oblongata. The, uh, what, do you, what would it be, a cerebral cortex, Eric? Yeah, something like that. A brainy thing. <laughs> it's a brainy thing. Thanks, fellas.